actually go with it. But one thing we, for, for sure we know is that you are certainly going to arrive at the answer. So let's look at the next question. Question number 15. Question number 15. Question number 15 says, it's a word problem question, so you have to be pay attention to it. A school has 500 students. A school has 500 students. If 200 students are girls, what is the ratio of boys to girls? So in this question, we are told that the school has 500 students, out of which 200 are girls. We were not given the numbers of boys, so we can actually get that. Since the class is mixed, is a mixture of boys and girls, because if they have access to a number of boys, it means the class is a mixture of both boys and girls. So it's a mixed school. So we are actually going to get the number of boys by subtracting it from the total number, subtracting the number of girls from total numbers. So we can go ahead and write that total number. So let's make it this way. Total number of students will be equals to, according to the equation, 500. So number of, I am mean, use N over number, so I'm actually abbreviating it to reduce uh, uh, the this, uh, this stress of writing it in full. So number of girls is given to us in the equation. Number of girls is given to us as 200. Now, number of boys, that is what we have to calculate now. Number of boys is 500. Number of boys, 500 minus the number of girls, 200. So if you take care of that, 500 minus 200, we have 300. So we have got the number of boys. So let's go back to the equation and glance through the equation again. The equation says, what is, what is ratio of boys to girls? Remember, ratio of boys to girls. So you pick the number of boys first before you pick the number of girls. Don't make the mistake of picking girls before boys. Follow the order so that you can get the right answer. So number of boys to girls, not girls to boys, but boys to girls. So number of ratio of boys to girls. So we pick boys first. Boys 200 is to, this is to, you can call it is to, or you call it ratio. So number of boys, two, 300, yes. Y number of girls is 200. So ratio of boys to girls. So boys 300 is to uh, girls, which is 200. So you don't need to stress yourself. Just simply zero, we cancel zero. Zero, we cancel zero. That is a shortcut to get that. So you only have three is to two. That is simplest ratio. Nothing can divide them again, and that becomes your answer. So if you go and check your option, that answer agrees with option number C. Number, five, number 16, rather. Question number 16. Question number 16 says, if twice the sum of x and 2y is added to three times, to thrice, which is actually three times, to thrice the sum of c and d, give a mathematical expression for this statement. The question is simple, very clear. We are told that if twice the sum if twice the sum of x and 2y, if twice the sum of x and 2y, so let's do that quickly. Twice the sum of x, x and twice the sum of uh, x and 2y, that is two times the sum of x and 2y. Of course, you know that sum is plus, so x plus 2y, then we multiply by two, that is what we mean by twice. And the next question said what? The next line say is added to thrice. Is added, which means it, we are talking about plus. So it's added, which is plus. Uh -huh. It's added to thrice. That is three times thrice, which is three times. Three times the sum of C and D. Three times the sum of C and D. And that is simple. If you check through your option, you must get that. If you don't have that, that means we have to simplify that. So if you check, your option is option B. So option B, answer that question. That question is very straightforward. Very, very straightforward. So if you know how to interpret your algebra, then you can get that done. Now, question number 17. Go to question number 17. In a basket with 24 mangoes, six are bad, 
if a mango is picked at random, what is the probability that it is good? Of course, if, if you have a good knowledge of probability, you will not have a challenge in this question. In a basket with 24 mangoes, so number of mangoes, total number of mangoes, you can just write that down, total number, I told you we'll be using NO for number, total number of mangoes will be equals to 24, because they said 24. Now, number of bad mangoes, number of bad mangoes. Number of bad mangoes in the equation, six. Six bad mangoes. They said, if a mango is picked at random, what is the probability that it is good? Now, we are not... We are not given the number of good mangoes, but since we have a total number of mangoes and out of that total, six are bad, then we can actually get number of good mangoes. So number of good mangoes is equals to, just do the subtraction, 24 minus six. Whatever you get becomes your answer. That is 18. 24 minus six, you have 18. So you, you have 18 which gives you the number of uh, uh, good mangoes. You have number of good mangoes. So let's go over to the question and answer the question now. What is the probability that it is a uh, good mango? So probability, we can write it in full, probability, probability of good mangoes. It's equals to, now the total number of good mangoes, Remember, probability is the number of uh, required outcome all over number of total outcome. Number of required outcome, all number of total outcome. Required outcome is actually the number of good mangoes. Total outcome is the total mango that we had, which was 24. So on doing that, we simply go ahead, get our rough, and do our division. So I'm going to take my rough. So I have 18 over 24 in my rough. Now, if you're very good, you don't need to bother yourself. Use 2. Since the two of them are even number, use 2 to strike. 2 will divide 18. You have 9. 2 should divide 24. You have 12. Quickly. Now, if you find out, you can see 2 can no more divide because we have an odd number and we have an even number. So, if we use 3 now, 3 will go into uh, 9. We have 3. 3 will go into 12. We have 4. I think that is the highest it can divide. At this point, no other number can divide that. So, finally, we have 3 over Four. When we did that division, we have 3 over 4. So that is our probability. So the probability of selecting a good mango from this basket is 3 over uh, three over 4. Remember, in probability, you, you are allowed to leave your answer in fractions. So make sure your answer are left in fraction. So the answer is C. The correct answer is C. So if you go to your option and check out the correct answer is C. The next question, question number 18. Question number 18 say convert convert the decimal fraction 0 0.24 to a common fraction convert the decimal fraction 0 0.24 to a common fraction it's very simple all you need to do write the decimal as a fraction if need be you cannot divide and get your final answer so i have 0 0.24 as a fraction so as a decimal rather so change the decimal to fraction first, then you can now simplify or reduce to the lowest uh, common uh, form. So you have that. Now that would be 24 over 100. Somebody will be asking how. Let me show you how. Now, write that if you have zero, you have 024. Now, if you look at 024, the, the real number there is 24. If you take it, okay, let's do this. Remove this decimal point, you have 024. And 024 is what? 24. You write the 24. Now go under the decimal point. The decimal point you are having, place a one under the decimal point, an imaginary one, place a one there. Every other number that comes after the decimal point, you can take uh, take them as zero. So the number that comes out of the decimal point, if you check, we have one, two. We have two of them. So that is why if I place one here, I have zero, zero, which means I'm going to have two, zero. That means I'm going to have 24 over 100. Another way to do it, remember that if you have one, two, that is hundreds. In your when you were dealing your your hundreds your hundred tens and unit and all that you were told this now you have this now you have gotten twenty four over hundred but if you check through the option there's nothing like twenty four over hundred so what should you do very simple go ahead and reduce your fraction to the lowest term 
Now pick your rough again. I have my rough with me. 24 all over 100. All over 100. Now check what can divide. I like using 2 because if you check, whenever you have a, a, a whenever you have an even, num even numbers to divide, use 2 to make it easier for you. So if I use 2 here, I will have, when I use 2 here, I have 12. I have 2 here, I have 50. Because 2 is going to 10, 5, we bring down the 0. I can still use 2 again because these are even numbers. 2 is going to 12, I have 6. 2 is going to 25. Or to, uh, 50 rather, I have 25 because 2 is going to 5, I have 2. I mean, that 1 put here, I have 10. 2 is going to 10, I have 5. So at the end of the day, we have 6 over 25. At this point, nothing can divide the both of them. So I think that is, we are sure that will be our lowest term. So we have, don't forget, we have 6 over 25. So 6 over 25. So 6 over 25 become our lowest term. So if you go to your option, go to your option and check. When you go to your option and check, you have the correct option there to be C. Option there to be C, which answer our question. Now, number that is C, I've indicated that. So number 19, number 19, the equation says the length of a ruler is 2 meter and the length of another ruler is 3 meter. What is the sum of the length of the two rulers? That is very simple. All you need to do is to sum. So imagine these rulers have numerical values. Now we just go ahead and sum them. Whatever we have been given, we have been given that the length of one of them is 2m. So we write 2m. The length of the other one is 3m. So we say plus 3m. So that becomes our answer. That becomes our answer 2m plus 3. 2m plus 3 is as simple as that. 2m plus 3. So that question did not really demand you to solve anything. Though it's a very long question. But you just interpret it, and that is simple. Remember, some is just to add. Some is just to add. So that, that was what you were required to do. So the correct answer is B. I indicate that so you can see that B as well. So in your booklet, you can tick it. Number 20. Number 20, question 20 said, what must be added to 43 to make 40? What must be added to 43 to make 40? So don't crack your brain thinking of what to add to make it 40, especially when you know that 40 is less than 43. Uh, if you start cracking your brain, you, you end up uh, you end up not coming up with any answer except you're, you're a genius and you're very smart. So in order to save your time, save your breath, save your strength for some other uh, serious question, you just go straight. Very simple. Go ahead. Get an unknown. So let the number be let the number be x yes so if i add x to 43 so 43 plus x it must 43 plus x must give me 40 must give me what 40 so i cannot solve this equation whatever comes out of this equation become my answer so i have x is equals to 40 you know this you have to move over minus 43 minus 43 so by the time i do that x is equals to 40 minus 43 i have minus 3 of course you know that's minus 3 because you, you you have to look at this plus here so plus minus is minus so 43 minus 40 you have 3 so the sign of the highest number which is minus you have that so that is just the answer so if you add minus 3 to 43 you're going to get 40 which means it's going to subtract so our correct option there, in our option, our correct option is B. And I've indicated that as B. Question number 20. Question number 20. Question number 21. Question number 21 does not require you to solve anything. Just for you to know more about polygons. So a pentagon is a polygon with how many sides? A pentagon is a polygon with five sides. So the answer is just B. 5 b5 because the pentagon is a polygon of uh, five sides hexagon six heptagon seven of course you know that i started with a uh, triangle triangle is three then you talk of a uh, equilateral uh -huh. talk of a uh, equilateral which is uh four or quadrilateral which is four and all that so those are some of the things you just need to just go and brush up your uh, polygon because the other ones may be axed it may not be pentagon it may be some other shape of the polygons. Now, question number 22. Now, question number 22. 
find the cost of a carpet 10 meter by 10 meter. Ten, sorry, find the cost of a carpet 10 meter by 12 meter. If one meter square costs 10 naira, if one meter square costs 10 naira, first I'm going to get the area of the carpet because what I'm be giving here, the, the question said if one meter square costs 10 naira, that meter square here talk about area that one unit area that is one meter square of the carpet cost 10 naira. So if I can get the total area of the carpet, I can know the cost, which is very simple. So area of the carpet. So go ahead and find the area, area of the carpet. Area of the carpet. Now area of the carpet is very simple. You know, area is uh, uh, length and breadth. So you go ahead and do that. We're giving 10 meter, we're giving 10 meter by 12 meter. That is 10 meter times 12 meter. So if you do that, you have 120, you have 120 meter square. So you have 120 meter square. So you can see that area of the carpet is equals to 10 meter by 12 meter. That is 10 meter times 12 meter, which will give us 120 meter square. So that is the total area of the carpet. Now don't forget that one don't forget that one meter square of the carpet costs 10 naira. So the cost, therefore, cost of the carpet is equals to 120 times 10 naira. The reason is that since one meter square costs 10 naira, therefore, 120 meter square must cost 120 times 10 naira. So if you multiply that very well, you get, of course, that is very simple to multiply. 120 times 1, you have 120. Take the zero, take the zero and add to it, you have another zero. So I simply said 120 times 1, I have 120. Take the zero and add, you have 1200. Zero, zero. So you have 1200 naira. So that will be the cost of the carpet. So that question is very simple, though it demands you to think a little. 1200. And if you check your option, your option is B. Your option is B. So I quickly indicate that B. Question number 23. Question number 23 says, if sine if sine theta is equals to 3 over 5 cos theta is equals to 4 over 5 find tan theta if sine theta is equals to 3 over 5 cos theta is equals to 4 over 5 find tan theta so the question is simple we are told that sine theta is equals to we are told that sine theta is equals to 3 over 5 and we also told that cos theta is also equals to 4 over 5. 4 over 5. And we are asked to find uh, tan theta. We are asked to find tan theta. That sin theta, sin theta is uh, 3 over 5. Cos theta is 4 over 5. Now remember, for you to solve this question, there will be a need for a shape. A need for a shape. So you are going to draw a right angle triangle. So it's always good to draw a right angle triangle. I'm going to draw one here now, quickly. A right angle triangle. I quickly draw a right angle triangle. You can see it here. A right angle triangle, I've drawn that. So you have your 90 degree indicator, which will help you to show you the hypotenuse. Now don't forget that, according to Sokatua, let me put that here. According to Sokatua, Soka. According to Sokatua, this simply mean this acronym simply mean uh, the first letter here is sine, the second one is uh, the one the next one here is cos cos, the next one here is tan that is sine of an angle, cosine of an angle, tangent of an angle. O is opposite, H is hypotenuse, A is adjacent, and that is all. So you have O to be opposite, H to be hypotenuse, and A to be adjacent. So which simply means, if I'm taking this, sine simply means opposite over adjacent. The first one over the second one. The first one over the second one. The first one over the second one. So I have that, that sine 
sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Now, opposite. Now, if I look at this shape now, this is my hypotenuse. This is my hypotenuse, the longest side, which this right angle is facing. That becomes my longest side. So if this is the opposite, then my adjacent, if I'm considering this angle, I may, I may choose an angle now. So let me choose this angle, for example. It, any angle you choose will determine your opposite. So if I choose this angle, for example, if I choose this angle, this is my opposite. If I choose this angle, this is my opposite. So whichever angle you're choosing, if I choose this, this becomes my opposite. Remember, your, your hypotenuse is determined by your... Uh, right angle triangle this block here yeah, this 90 degrees will show you your right angle triangle so wherever the uh, right angle is facing becomes your hypotenuse so if that is settled now if i tend to choose this angle to be my theta then wherever this angle is facing become my opposite so my opposite is this place so remember sine is opposite and opposite is three hypotenuse is five that is for sine now i have cosine cosine was given to me cosine is adjacent and adjacent, this cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is 4, hypotenuse is 5. That is already indicated 5. So that is very simple. I can go ahead and find tan theta. Now tan theta, tan theta is very simple. So remember, drawing this shape is very, very important. Because if you don't draw the shape, it, not, it will not be that easy for you to get the equation solved. So you must draw the shape as a matter of fact. You must draw the shape so if i go ahead and draw this shape that tan theta tan theta now if i look at it from this my soccer tour i see that tan theta is opposite over adjacent now from this angle this is the opposite of this angle which is three opposite is three all over adjacent which is four so my answer becomes three over four so that is my answer three over four remember you must draw this shape if you don't draw this shape you can get it clear so three over four three over four yes so if you look at it the correct answer is c we shall have indicated c correct answer is c ladies and gentlemen this is where we come to the end of this particular class meet you again in another edition of this class if you're yet to uh, subscribe, if you're new here, you are asked to subscribe so that you can meet up with other of our videos. Please don't forget to click on the subscription button, click on the uh, notification button, like our videos, share our videos, invite your friends and get more of this. See you.